Larry Smith, here today with the Vice President of Operations and Planning, Rick Ewing. Rick, thank you so much for joining me today. Certainly happy to be here. So can you tell me a little bit about what you do for your position here? Sure. In operations and planning, we cover a lot of different areas of campus. Um, some of the areas would include facilities, so you could talk about our buildings, our grounds, our custodial services, uh, auxiliary services, so dining, bookstore, um, catering, those elements are part of operations and planning. And in the planning part, uh, in addition to what we do planning around facilities, I also administer and oversee our university strategic plan, Ashland Rising 2020. Okay. And what improvements have been made to the campus this year? Well, we've had a lot of different activities going on, both on campus and off campus. Uh, some of the most dramatic improvements are actually off campus. Uh, one of them is down at our seminary campus where we've renovated the Schultz Academic Center, uh, and that is now the new home of the uh, church, excuse me, the Brethren Church National Offices. So they moved in there just a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's great to have them on, on the campus down there. Uh, the other large renovation that we've been working on for quite some time is in downtown Ashland on Main Street. Uh, the former Chase Bank building at 26 West Main is now the home of our correctional education program. So we have staff down there, about 30 folks that, that have moved down there in a couple weeks ago. And while we're not completely finished with that building, uh, that's been one of the major projects that we, we've been working on. So. Off campus, those are some of the projects that we've spent a lot of uh, time and effort into. Uh, on campus, uh, we've done a lot of things, nothing that would stand out dramatically, unfortunately. Um, uh, we've been working with IT to update a lot of the classrooms, so technology, uh, putting what, new whiteboards in, projectors and so forth has taken place across campus. Uh, we did create a couple of unique projects in the College of Business and Economics. Uh, they created a new innovation lab. Um, so we helped reconfigure that space and, and add some space for students to use there. Um, the rest of the stuff we've done is, is kind of that stuff that you don't see. So, so boilers, or roof replacements, um, uh, sidewalks, uh, some things. One thing I do want to point out is it's, it's it in the process right now at the crosswalk of Jefferson and Claremont, we're mm -hmm. installing new pedestrian uh, signals. So these signals will help improve pedestrian safety. They'll be much more visible to the, the traffic. Uh, they'll allow uh, for actual lighting up of the crosswalk so students will be more visible uh, as they go through there. So those are a couple of projects that we've been working on and, and improvements we've been making around campus. Okay, and uh, when do you think the crosswalk project will kind of begin and end? Well, it's actually already begun. So uh, last week we, or excuse me, earlier this week we in installed foundations, um, and hopefully on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week we'll actually install the, the units themselves. So uh, they're, they're very visible, they're purple. Uh, obviously we want to make sure we know we're at Ashland, uh, but uh, I think it'll be a great amenity to, to improve the safety for students there. Yeah, and have you gotten a lot of good reactions from students and faculty members about the improvements? Yes, um, you know, especially the, the corrections uh, uh, building down on West Main, you know, those folks are very excited to be in there. Uh, we're looking to try and hold an open house here in the next uh, couple weeks or months, depending on, on when that makes sense. Um, but anytime we can do improvements around campus, um, it, it's some of it, like I said, is noticed, some of it is not noticed. Um, I can highlight, you know, it really isn't this academic year, but when students came back in the fall, uh, we had just done a fairly major refresh of Myers Hall. So things like carpet, paint, we redid the lobby, new furnishings, and those sorts of things. So get good feedback from those type of activities. Yeah, and can you tell me about the um, senior class gift in the Rose Garden? Sure. So the Rose Garden uh, is actually just outside the library between Bixler and Patterson. Um, it's highlighted by roses, obviously, uh, but there's also a large spruce tree. Now, that spruce tree was planted probably, well, it was before I... Uh, got here probably 20 years ago, uh, it's kind of overgrown a space. And if you know anything about roses, roses need sunlight. And so it's not really working in the configuration that it is now. So we plan on removing the spruce tree. Uh, we're going to update some of the bricks and some of the landscaping in the area. But we're going to feature uh, an eagle sculpture that some of you may remember was out at the point, uh, at the intersection of Claremont King. Oh, yeah. it, it's a bronze sculpture, you know, kind of eagle in flight kind of thing. We're going to, we still have that, so we're going to bring back that and highlight that in the middle of the Rose Garden. So very excited about the project. Uh, I know the senior class officers have been engaged in, in, in developing that and uh, we're excited to get that going here this summer. 
Yeah, and um, can you tell me about the master plan that you guys have going on? Absolutely. So in 2013, uh, the university engaged a consulting firm which helped us develop what we call a university campus master plan. Uh, it looks at our entire university, uh, the, all 135 acres that we have here, and it just starts looking at where we have opportunities to grow, where we have opportunities to change. You know, at the time in 2013, we were looking at our strategic priorities relative to what new facilities what might we want to bring in or what renovations, and in some cases, what buildings might we tear down. And that's all kind of documented into a master plan. It's not a, uh, a necessarily a recipe that we have to follow step by step, but it gives us guidance. So as we're thinking about you know, where we might put future parking lots, oh, well, we really planned on a potentially a building going there. So, so that master plan was developed in 2013. Ideally, you want to look at that master plan every five to eight years, which now we're five years into it, and, and, and do some updates. So we've, we've started to talk to other constituents, um, to our consultants, and uh, certainly as part of our strategic plan, want to look at that master plan again and update it here in the, in the next year or two. Okay. And do you have any um, improvements planned for over the summer? Yeah, again, a lot of those uh, non-exciting uh, type things. We've got two major roof projects that we're looking at. One is at our Columbus Center, um, where we have our, our building down there. The other is on the library. Uh, we've been spending a, a lot of effort on the library over the last decade, really, to improve, to update, and to uh, take care of some maintenance issues there. So a roof, uh, possibly a new cooling tower. Um, we're also looking at our residence halls. We, we like to do uh, refreshes or updates every year. Um, I think Clayton is kind of next on the list, so we're looking through the scopes of what might be involved there, everything from carpet and paint and flooring and lighting and, and updated Wi-Fi. Um, I do want to point out that uh, we're also looking at updating Wi-Fi in our residence halls this summer, so uh, we're, we've uh, got a plan that will bring those up to uh, basically the, the latest and greatest and improve that speed for students, which I know has been an issue in the past. Yeah, and you said you worked with Ashland Rising 2020. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit about your work there? Sure. So uh, our strategic plan, Ashland Rising 2020, it was a five-year plan. So it started in 2015, shortly after Dr. Campo uh, came to campus. Uh, it's it's got five pillars. Uh, it's got uh, 25 goals. There are 65 objectives. So managing that plan, uh, making sure that it's helping drive decisions um, and uh, applying resources is something that we try and keep on on task. But as we know. 2020 is coming up soon, and so we're really trying to look at, okay, well, where were our successes with this plan, and how do we roll that into a next plan, whatever it may be. Yeah, and uh, do you have any plans for the next academic year? Um, next academic year, I know that uh, there's going to be a lot of IT upfresh around, excuse me, refresh around campus. Um, again, we continue to upgrade classrooms, uh, computers, uh, both in computer labs and for faculty and staff. Um, we will be trying to do some improvements with our grounds around campus. Uh, so every year um, we, we kind of pick an area and try and address that. I know that our brick sidewalks are, are getting old, and so how we can update those, make them a little more uh, appealing and a little less uh, trip hazard. Um, so we're looking at landscaping options. Uh, and then again, we just want to continue to look at our, our residence halls and see how we can improve uh, furnishings and amenities in those as well. Okay. And then the university is so involved in the Ashland community. Mm -hmm. Do you get a lot of reactions from the community about changes going on on campus? Absolutely. That, that's, that's one of the pillars of the uh, strategic plan, uh, our enhanced community engagement, Pillar 5, uh, that I actually kind of oversee and am pretty intimate with. So uh, the community and the relationship between the community and Ashland University, I think, has never been stronger. Um, our mayor, I meet with him frequently talking about things. The pedestrian crosswalk is one good example where I, I had the mayor, the city engineer, the police chief, the fire chief, and, and our safety director all out there talking about what we can do to make this safer. And so they've been very supportive of that. They, they've helped us uh, come up with some solutions. Uh, and it's just those, those small things that, that really make that connection, show that, that both the university and this community are improving. The downtown building is another great example. We now have 30 people down there that are, are going to lunch, stopping in shops. The community loves that engagement. It loves seeing Ashland University reinvest in the community in a positive and, and financial way. Yeah. Well, Rick, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in to The Eagle's Eye. I'm your host, Ingrid Schmidt. Be sure to follow AUTV20 across social media at AUTV20. Thanks for tuning in.